In today's video, we'll see how to create a system that detects the distance between the player character and a target point. To do so, we first need to add in our scene a target. So search target in the place actors and drag and drop it in the viewport. I can delete it since I have mine already here on top of this white cube. So when we'll play the game, we'll see the exact uh, position. Now with your target point selected, move inside blueprint, right click, create reference to target point, and we can connect it to a get distance to. The other actor input can be connected to a get player character. Now from here, we can connect the return value to a print string and update it using a event tick, which produces a series of triggers at the same speed of your frame rate. We can then connect the return value to the in string and disconnect the duration input. So on screen we'll see the actual distance detected by this get node. We can now play the game and here you have the distance. Since we want to use this value to control audio volume, we need to scale or remap this value. To do so, we can connect the return value of get distance to a normalize to range. And we need to specify from here its minimum and maximum input range. Since we don't know the exact uh, position of our character from the target point, we need to find a defined position in the game scene where we want the system to start detecting the distance. And we can do so by using uh, a trigger box. Here it is the one I had previously uh, created. So let's say that from this position, when we overlap the trigger box, we want to detect the distance between the player and the character. So we select the trigger box, right click, and event collision being overlap. We connect it to a do once. And then from here, we want to set a variable where we can store the maximum range distance. We can create a new variable. I have already done. So this is my variable max range distance, which is a float variable. We can drag and drop it so we can get it and oops, set it. On top here, we want the do once to trigger the set and the max range distance should be connected to the first value detected by the get distance node. Then from this get variable, we can connect it to the range max. And now we can have a look inside the viewport. The problem we have now is that when we are really far from the sound source, our normalized value is one. But if we want to use this value to control, let's say volume, it's the exact opposite. When we are far from a specific position, we want the volume to be really low. So we can use a float minus float. And we can subtract to one our normalized value. Now we can create the audio system. We need first to 
connect a spawn sound attached and inside its sound input we want to uh, add a sound cue. I have already created one which is distance cue and in here I have this looping audio file and we need to connect it to a continuous modulator. The behavior of this node is similar to other nodes such as branch where we have a parameter name which allows the sound cue to interact with blueprint values. So we can set this name identifier to let's say my parameter and we can set a default value of 0 and minimum input to 0 0.01 as well for minimum input as well for minimum output. The maximum value can stay, can stay at 1. Now from here we can select our distance queue and define a listening position. To do so we need to create a scene component I have already done it. This is my player component. It is a variable uh, of type scene component, which we can simply drag and drop it in the viewport, get and attach to component. Now we need to create one more variable, which is a audio component. We can do so clicking uh, plus variable. Let's call it audio comp in its detail panel we change its variable type to audio component you have to select this one with the speaker icon and select object reference compile and you can drag and drop it here we want to set it so we can connect it to the output of spawn sound attached, send it to the set of our maximum range distance and connect the return value of our spawn sound attached to its blue input. From here we can right click and get once again our audio component and connect it to a set float parameter. It uses a, a name parameter to send values to a sound cue. Here we can type our name identifier and we can send inside its in float the normalized value. From here we can get rid of the uh, print string. We can take the event tick and connect it to a gate which can be open if the max range distance is uh, set. If so, we can execute the set float parameter. Now we can finally play the game and have a listen to the final result.